Welcome to this episode of The World Around Us. We are doing uh, a demonstration, investigation, confirmation of activity series, activity series with uh, the metals, some of the metals. So uh, the idea of the, act of the activity series is that some of the elements are more likely to react than others. That's the activity of them. They have a higher activity, so they're more likely to react. Uh, and so we have in the, in the bottles here uh, five solutions of iron, magnesium, uh, lead, copper, and zinc. And it's the, it's the NO3 solution. So we have those solutions, and then we have the elements. So the, the concept is if, for example, magnesium will replace the iron, then we put the magnesium into the solution, we're going to see some evidence of a chemical change where that magnesium would be, if it will, replace the, the iron. So this is the setup. In this video, we're going to have the setup, and then we'll have actually conducting the experiment, collecting the, the data, and then we'll have a, a discussion in the results. So we will um, we were going to be looking at this in three parts. So if you're doing the virtual lab, if you're doing the virtual lab, then you'll want to um, watch the setup and then collect the results. If you're doing the lab in class, then you watch the setup and then go conduct it. And if you're just doing the whole, like, what is the activity series and what does this mean, watch the whole video. So let's get started. Here's the setup. So I've, I have sampled out some of the reactants. Uh, the potential reactants in, into the Wayne boats, and there's, they're going to be put into the uh, spot plates. And so we'll have the solution in the, the, each of the wells will have the solution in it, and then we will put the element into the other places. So we have, and then where we have iron and iron, there will be nothing, and where we have Magnesium and magnesium, there will be nothing, and so on. So there's going to be a diagonal of nothing, because you don't want, because we know that iron and iron is, you know, we're not going to see a reaction because it's the same thing. All right, so that's the setup. Um, I'm going to uh, put those things in. We'll come back to the video. And I've put about five drops into each of the wells. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the samples and, the, and put those in. So this is, I put pennies over the iron iron. So there's no iron goes in there. So iron will go in with the magnesium, the lead, the copper, and the zinc. All right. So we'll do that now. Getting small amounts in. We're only looking for evidence of a reaction, so the amount is not critical. All right, so we have we have put them in. Now, what is left to do is to watch and look for color change, bubbles, production of gas, anything like that, that would be evidence of a chemical reaction. So we have to look really close and, and watch that to see if we can determine which cases resulted in some sort of a chemical reaction. And then we will be able to determine who replaces whom on the reaction table. So that's the, that's the scheme. We just need to let it cook for a little while and then we will come back and take a look at the results. All right, let's, let's uh, try to take a look at the results. I made a, a little bit of a change to the setup. I, I switched out the orange-yellow paper for white paper since color change is one of the things we're looking for. Um, so the, uh, I also added to the well, um, I added a, a column of just the reactants. And then I, I created, a, at the top, I put a row of the metal samples. So we have the solutions going across. Uh, in a row and the metal samples going in a column. So we'll start with, did the zinc react? Did we have zinc reacting? So this is, this is what the zinc looks like before and this is what the iron solution looks like before. 
So we very clearly have some change. Definitely some kind of a change there. Next we have the zinc and the magnesium. Um, there, there doesn't really seem to be any change noticeable uh, in that. That does not seem to have changed. The zinc and the lead. Very, very much a color change. The, the gray zinc became black. Likewise, in the copper solution, the gray of the zinc became black. So we have, uh, those are the, the outcomes for, the only thing it did not react with was magnesium. So now let's take a look at copper. This is what the copper looked like when we put it in. Copper with the iron solution. So, so the copper in the iron solution, there seems to be no change. Copper in the magnesium solution, no change. Something spilled into the lead, uh, the lead solution with the copper and did not change. The copper is unchanged. The solution is unchanged. And then the copper with the zinc also unchanged. So the copper did, did not take the place of anything in that list. Now take a look at the lead. This is what the, this is what the lead sample looked like. Um, if we look into the, the lead and the iron, there, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of difference in color or in, in the lead. Um, if we look at lead with magnesium, it seems to be unchanged. If we look at lead with copper, and it's it seems maybe the lead has blackened um, the the copper solution doesn't seem to be dramatically changed but um, the the lead might arguably be changed to uh, more of a black color so it's kind of questionable if there is a, a a color change there and finally the lead with the zinc um, there's no change. Comparing that lead sample to that lead sample makes me more inclined to say there was a change with lead and copper. Let's do the magnesium. Magnesium. This is what the magnesium turning, a little, a little turning of magnesium looked like before. And if we look into the solution, um, it's obviously changed color. We also can compare the color of the solution and it is also it is also changed so we're, we're going to say there was a color change evident in the magnesium the lead magnesium the magnesium is utterly changed um, so we're gonna have to go with yes the magnesium likewise in the copper and it appears obvious that there has been some some change to the to the magnesium in that case. We're going to say that reaction took place. And lastly, the zinc, the magnesium with the zinc. Um, we're going to suppose that uh, color change, the darkening from the dark gray to almost a, a black is, is possibly a reaction. Um, so we'll, we'll, go with, we'll go with that as a, as a probably, but the visual evidence is not overwhelming. And last, iron. This is the iron powder that we put in. Um, iron with magnesium, it just seems to be floating on the surface. Iron with lead, it, it uh, could be darker. Um, the visual evidence here uh, is questionable, but not here. The blue of the copper has turned orange. The copper, the iron, uh, the iron on this in the solution seems also to have uh, altered. And lastly, iron and zinc. It, it just looks like the iron is floating there in the on the surface tension of the zinc solution. So we're going to say no, no reaction for the iron and zinc. So, so that's it. Um, that's our our little outcome thing you've I put this up uh, as a chart on the on the screen so you can you can see what we what we're seeing here um, so there's our results um, and all of that is is here here in the chart you can see that so that is our data collected 
Now, if you are uh, doing this as a virtual lab, then this is where you stop and write up your conclusions. If if you are just, um, you know, if you're just learning about activity series, come back after the short break, and we'll talk about the the, the results. All right, if you are still watching the video, then you want to talk about the activity series and, and what is indicated about the activity series based on the results, so the conclusions. Uh, and, and what we can do is you can uh, take, compare our results to established, understood activity series and see, see how, we, how our reaction compares. So what we want to do is look at what happened in the wells and compare uh, and, and create our, our, our own activity series from that. So we want to look first at the zinc. Did the zinc react more than the iron? And the answer there is, is yes it did. So zinc is going to be higher up than iron. Iron is going to come below zinc. Did zinc react with the magnesium? We said no. We said there was no reaction. So magnesium is going to be above zinc. So we're just getting our little list going over here. Magnesium is above zinc. Is zinc and lead? We said that zinc did react, take the place of lead. So zinc is more reactive than lead. So we're going to bring lead down and leave zinc up there. Zinc and copper, yes. So copper goes down and zinc, zinc is above copper. So, so there, that is what we can conclude from that row. Copper didn't replace anybody. The, none of the copper, none of the wells in copper indicated anything. So copper's at the bottom of our list. Of, of these five things, copper, copper goes to the bottom. Did lead replace iron? No. Did, so iron is above lead. Did lead replace magnesium? No. So iron is below magnesium. Did lead replace copper we said it did we've already got that copper on the bottom and did lead replace zinc and we said no we said lead did not replace zinc so so zinc is above lead in our activity series let's look at magnesium we said that magnesium definitely reacted with the iron we said that it definitely reacted with the uh, lead definitely so these are things that is definitely at the top of and we, we were a little bit iffy with regards to magnesium and zinc so um, we'll have to we'll have to sort that out but based on the zinc side we said that the zinc was below magnesium so I feel like we we're going to be able to keep the magnesium um, at the top zinc did not replace the magnesium, so, so the magnesium is going to be higher up. I said zinc at the top, but magnesium is going to be higher up. Finally, iron. Um, we said that iron did not react with the magnesium. We said that we weren't 100% sure about with the lead, but maybe it did. Uh, but based on our lead column, the lead did not react with the iron, so, so we're probably going to leave iron above the lead. lead did, iron did replace the copper, and iron did not react with the zinc. So here's our table. With all those things we said, shuffling them all around, this is the list that we came up with. There's our activity series based on this trial using these uh, reactants. So, so that's it. All right, activity series. What is most active and then what is least active and then how do they rank in the middle? That's basically what it is. When you're predicting products of a reaction, you can look at the activity series and say, well, this can't happen because magnesium is more reactive than copper, so the copper cannot take the place of the magnesium. Therefore, this reaction will or will not take place. We, we can predict what's going to occur uh, in uh, the single and double replacement reactions based on the activity series. All right, hopefully this was a, uh, an, an interesting run through what Activity Series is and kind of a, a sample of what we can do with it. That is all for this episode. Hopefully um, uh, you enjoyed this. If you did, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, sign up for notifications, leave me a comment, question, or suggestion. And once again, here's our results. Here's our chart. Uh, this is the Activity Series we came up with. Um, that's our conclusion. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode.